Welcome to another video by ChefsResources.com. I'm Chef David and today we're going to be looking at a scheduling form which is done in Excel. If you're watching this on YouTube, look in the description area below and you'll find a link to my website for a free download of this. If you're already on the website, then look near the bottom of the article. You'll see a green download button. Click on that and you'll be able to get this puppy. If you see any download buttons near the top of the page, just ignore them because they're probably advertisements. All right, so once you've downloaded it and opened the uh, file up, more than likely you're going to see a yellow bar like this one right here. And it says, protected view, this file originated from an internet location and might be unsafe. Click for more details. Uh, so it's just a standard protocol that Excel uses whenever you download a file from anywhere else, whether it's another computer, email, whatever. So in order to use a form, you're going to have to click on Enable Editing, and it will set it up for you. Now, this is just a different form uh, that I had just recently downloaded in order to show you that. But let's hop back over to the actual scheduling form. All right, so the intent of this is to be able to use this form for an entire month. So you'll probably have on your computer a folder named Schedules. Under that, you might have 2018, 2017, however many years you want. And then within the 2018 folder, you'll have all 12 months. If you look at the bottom here, I have um, up to six weeks worth of schedules. Now the reason for that is on a rare occasion a month will flow over an entire six weeks. So for instance, if you look at December of 2017, it fell on a Saturday, the 1st of December. So in order to get this schedule to work correctly, being that I'm on a Monday through Sunday, I had to put in 1126 in order to get uh, December 1st to fall here. And then if I go to week six, we'll see that the 31st of December was on a Monday. So most of the time you're not gonna need week six, but it's there so that you can have your entire month schedule all in one place. All right, so let's jump into how to use this. This area right here is set up as a header. You need to change it on week one only because the form is set up to copy everything from week one onto all of the other weeks. So if I put in Eagles Buffet, click out, you'll see that the other weeks have Eagles Buffet. I'll undo that. For the days of the week, if you don't use a Monday through Sunday uh, weekly schedule, but it might flow Saturday through Tuesday or whatever, you can change it on week one and it will change on all the other weeks. So again, if I just, let's say, copy this to here. Um, if your week ones runs Friday through whatever that would be, change it on week one and you'll notice that it copies that to the other weeks. I'll fix that back to where it should be. And lastly, the date. So this cell here on week one is in yellow and you'll put the date for whatever, you know, the first day of the schedule week is. For me, it's Monday. Um, put that date here and it automatically will roll out for the entire month. So let's say that I want 7-1. You'll notice that it has taken and moved that all the way through the rest of the month. 
Now, additionally, if I come into week two and try to change it here, you're going to get a pop-up like this that says the cell or chart that you're trying to change is protected and therefore read only. So the header is protected on weeks two through six and you cannot change it there. It's only able to be edited on week one. Um, if you really want to be able to change it at some point, you can unprotect the sheet and make those modifications. You can look at the links below to see how to do that. Uh, but I've safeguarded it just to, uh, to make it simple for everybody. All right, so now you're ready to start actually entering <coughs> a schedule. So you'll just pick the first cell. We'll type in the staff's names. and you'll continue that down the whole schedule. For each person, there is a, you know, uh, in time and an out time. So you'll notice that a pop-down arrow is uh, appearing when I click in the in time, and I have 24 hours in here by 15 minute increments for AM and PM. So all you gotta do is pick a start time and an end time <clears throat> and that is this person's schedule for that day and you'll notice over here that it has given the total hours for the uh, scheduled shifts. Now you don't have to do that for all of these cells. Once you've got a schedule in here, let's say that this schedule is actually the same for all four of these people, you can just copy and paste it for all of them. And now let's say this guy's got these two days off. I'll highlight it, hit delete. Let's say this guy's got those two days off, highlight, delete. This guy's got these two highlight, delete, and let's say he's got these two days off, highlight and delete. So the way this is set up is anything that is empty is technically your scheduled off days. Um, and you can see again, it has totaled the hours over here. Now hitting delete does not delete the functionality in here. That is all still there. And let's say that maybe on uh, Friday, this guy is actually working noon to say 10. Um, and then you can copy and paste that. And then you'll notice that it's showing that he's working 44 hours. So it does keep track of overtime, but it doesn't show overtime separately. So anyways, that's the quickest, easiest way to put in scheduled shifts. Um, so now let's take a peek at rolling this out for other weeks. So I've changed it here on week one. If I go to week two, you'll see week two is still blank and it's gonna be that way for each of the uh, weeks in the future because I'm assuming that you may want to change each separate week. So if I go to week three here, I've put in a complete schedule and you'll notice that it's got the total hours here. For me, I use colors to signify what stations people are working in. I do that for two separate reasons. First, not every cook is capable of working every station. Um, so it's a double check for me to be sure that the people I've scheduled actually have the ability to work this station here. It's also a way for me to double check that I have each uh, station scheduled. So I'll notice on Monday, I don't have a blue, so I don't have a wheel person. So I still need to add somebody in here on Monday and they have to be somebody that can call the wheel. Um, the second reason that I 
color code these is so that my crew know exactly what station I want them working in, um, especially on days where I've got multiple people. That just makes it so that they don't fight and bicker over which station they're in. I'm telling them where I want them to be and you know if they want to make changes they'll have to make those arrangements with me or with the sous chef. Now, I also use a color, for me it's green, you can use whatever, to put in requested days off and I will put that on the schedule very first thing before I do anything else. That way I don't get to the end of the schedule and say oh shoot I forgot Henry is supposed to have Saturday off and now I gotta hunt around and change things up. Alright so <clears throat> that is a quick summary of how to enter a schedule and how it, uh, you know color coding it and so on can help. Now let's say I want to copy this schedule onto week four. There are two ways to do that. The first way is to highlight the schedule. Now in this scenario, if you use this method, you only highlight the schedule. Remember you're not going to highlight this header area because you will not be able to copy and paste into there. So I'll highlight the uh, entire schedule and then copy it. I'll go to the next week, click in the same cell, and click paste. And this assumes that the schedule is identical. But even if it's not, you can still come in here and change time frames and so on. Now the other way to do this is to click roll schedule. So here I am back on week three, week four is empty. If I click roll schedule, now you'll notice that it is copied and pasted into week four. So here's week three, here's week four. This button is a macro. It's basically a mini, uh, oh, a mini program which went through and copied all of the steps that I took in order to uh, copy and paste this and makes it functional by simply clicking this button. That's a macro and it will only work from like week one to week two, week two to week three, week three to week four, and so on. Um, so consecutive weeks only. If you click on the button and you get an error message of some sort, uh, first error might be that yellow bar again. Let me bring it up. Oh, I already got rid of it. The first error message might be a yellow bar right up here that says something about enabling macros. So you'll want to click enable macros in order to get this to work. The second way to get macros to work if you do not get the yellow bar pop up here is to go to file and click on it. Go to options. Go to trust center click on trust center settings and then over in this uh, left hand panel click on macro settings and you've got a number of options here a lot of times they may be turned off um, in your basic setup of Excel you want to click enable all macros and it does say that it's not recommended because it can be potentially dangerous uh, code um, you know, I'm not a hacker, so if you trust me, just enable it and it's going to run just fine. So you do that. And then uh, you might have to save the program or refresh it and try again to run the macro. But anyways, uh, that will get this little click roll schedule thing to work for you. All right, so let me show you a couple other pointers here. If you don't really care for color coding people by station, or if you want to incorporate this with another way of signifying different stations or shifts, you can also do this. Just uh, use one of these rows 
and let's say that this is going to be prep cooks whoops <coughs> prep cooks and in order to make it stand out on the schedule I'll come up here pick a fill color and put it there and then you could do the same thing say down here you've got your line cooks or perhaps you've got day shift and night shift or back at the house <coughs> and front of the house so if you like color coding things this way by station or shift that's certainly another option alright so a couple other notes if you want to to set the print area the way to do that is you need to highlight what you need to print so let's say I only want this much of the schedule to be printed and not all the empty spaces so you'll highlight the schedule go to page layout click on print area and set print area now you'll notice that a dotted line showed up here if it doesn't fit the page let me change this automatic and margins normal so now you'll notice that I've got a light dashed line here that means that when it goes to print it's going to print all of this first all the way down and then it's going to come back and print this basically it doesn't fit on the page so in order to make sure that the print area also fits on one page the easiest way is to come up to width and select width of one page wide you want to leave the height as automatic because that way if it's two or three pages it will print two or three pages uh, in depth but only one page wide you can further modify the margins by coming over here I like to use a uh, custom margin of about 0.45 on the left and right I like an inch and a half up top simply so it'll fit on a clipboard and click OK so now again you're gonna see that the dashed line is at the edge of the page that I want to print uh, one further option for you is orientation this is portrait which means it prints you know lengthwise landscape will print it um, horizontally alright that's a wrap for this video tutorial if you find the uh, the demo helpful at all please hit the like button below if you're not a subscriber please hit the subscribe button and you'll get uh, notifications when I put out new videos thanks a lot have a great day